only get worse when you know this. You know. And I like it. I get on the side, get on the side. Yeah, man. Going like three days with no sleep, yo. But I still got my dirty, dirty Diana. You coffee. Talking about you lie, you never live inside, but I never buy. Just keep it private, ho. Living my life, cause I never decided. You're a real ass woman and I like it. You forgot you, you forgot me, we from free. I said, you need and I'm just you what you need. You said, guarantee. <laughs> Shit. I mean, you say it like it's easy. And you're gonna believe me. So you, I got seasons, I'm sleepy. Yeah, I'm sleepy. <laughs> Indecisive. But you're a real ass woman, and I like it. I don't want to find it. Yo, it's crazy. Yo, time is it, man? Yeah, I got a whole hour fuck with you niggas. Yeah, definitely, it's a lot of hate out there, but it is what it is, man. Niggas don't even want me to sleep like this, you feel me? There's just a bunch of hate. So I just realized, you know, just like my past. <clears throat> Hold on. Yeah, just like my past. When these things occur, I had to eliminate certain things. Certain things just had to go. A lot of baggage on, I just got to drop these things off. So, you know, God's willing. I'm strong enough. That's what I'll be praying for. I'll be praying for strength from God to not strength as in let me lift weight or anything else like that. Strength as to let go of weight. The invincible weight that's on me, you feel me? Stuff like bad habits and things that I need to do, so... I can move forward with this, so that's what I'll be asking for God sometimes. Like, give me that strength, man. I need that strength to let go. Usually, we ask for strength. Strength is something that you see in your mind that is gained, like you're gaining more strength, like more power. But I'll be asking God for strength, not in that capacity. I'm not asking God for strength to, you know what I mean? Drop. Drop some kind of weight off you, you feel me? Because sometimes the weight can be so heavy on you, you don't even have the strength to drop it off. You feel me? And so it's like, you know, you got to think of it in that capacity, you feel me? Some people be asking for God for strength, which is like put more weight or more power on me. I'm telling God, uh, take this baggage off me. The weight is so heavy, sometimes you don't even have the strength to just whew, relieve it. I don't need God to do that for me because... Niggas step up there, hey, you gotta step up your competition type shit. You know what I mean? They gonna regret it. You gotta make them regret it. You gotta make them regret it. And these are the things, guys, you gotta sharpen your... Still sharpen still. So when they bring that still to you, you gotta sharpen it. Like, you gotta sharpen it. So I'm talking to myself at the same time. I gotta sharpen this shit up, make sure the... 
they feel it. They got to feel it. It's like I'm feeling it, they got to feel it too. So if I make some prog progression, I'm going to let y'all know pro pro progress has a progression. Yeah, I'm going to let y'all know about that. Everything is going to be on the cover. They got to so it's a, it's got to, gotta give, gotta give it back. Yeah, I don't need it no more because the only reason why I buy it because it's hot. But once it starts getting warm, I don't want it no more. <clears throat> yeah. Once, once it's um, warm, I don't want it no more. You feel me? So. That's why we tell her mom when she don't want to listen to them. I be like, yeah, mommy, like, oh yeah, like, wait, you do the coffee last. You feel me? It's not because the coffee tastes good. That's why I can't stop buying it. Nah. <laughs> I just like it because it's hot. It keeps a nigga warm. You feel me? That's all. It ain't French cappuccino. It ain't, it ain't some next kind of brewer. Nah, it's not none of that. She think I like her coffee cause it tastes good. She must be sadly mistaken, man. Feel me? Nah, it's not cause of that. It's quite the opposite. I just like it cause it keeps me warm. Nah, me every sip keeps me warm. She wanna make the coffee before she make the food. But it's all good, man. Anyway, yo. Uh, it's another day, man. Said my hand keep us, but her hand keep us in. Just be in some fast food. You, me, and. Set my hand, keep screaming. Me and me. And that's what happened when you have no self control. Now we're gonna talk about um let me see if they still got that shit up. How to be how to be an upstander instead of a bystander. Now this particular topic was on um let me turn this off. See I got right into it, right? Yeah. I can be playing, then when it's time to put, uh, stop playing, we get right into it, yeah. But how to be, um, how to be an upstander instead of a bystander, you dig? Like, like I was saying, this particular topic was on TED, you know what I mean? Subscribe to TED if you if you have not. Um, TED basically is like a, a, st it's a platform, more like a stage where people bring their ideas, innovations, you know, all the greats have been there talking, talking about from Jeff Bezos to maybe, maybe Jeff Bezos, I think. But uh, people that have worked for him definitely have been on it. Um, Elon Musk been on it, feel me? All, everybody that you know that's an influencer has been on it some, somehow, somewhere. And you have the average Joe like myself, all the way down to myself that I've also been on it. And there was a particular lady who I woke up this morning to. And she, um, I think her name is Angeliqui, Angeliquin Potter. I think that's the name. I know I fucked up the first name, but Potter, I think I got that right. Potter, 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 Potter. Fucked up her name totally. But the topic is, um, or the title of the, of the, of the uh, subject she was speaking about, which lasted for about five minutes and 49 seconds was how to be an upstander instead of a bystander. And she was just speaking to how she um, she basically just standing up to authorities when things when when th when people are not upholding what they're supposed to uphold and you feel me? So she would just basically have the courage to speak up when you see something wrong. You feel me? She was just saying that even if the eyes I'm just summarizing it. Even if the odds is against you, have the courage to speak up. Basically, that's what she was talking about. Even you feel me? It's don't be. And she was just describing the differences between um, between the two. Some 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 are just onlookers. 
who um who are just looking and not doing nothing are as guilty as the one that's performing the act itself. She was also talking about um those who are bystanders. You feel me? But yet are benefiting from what is going on, but then act like they not. She broke it down very nicely within that time frame. You feel me? And just side note, I can see y'all mad at me now because I see the message going back and forth. Oh, I don't care. And that was it for the side note. Anyway, um, <laughs> so she was just talking about the differences between the two. You dig? Like, she was just talking about the difference. Uh, no, she broke it down more than just two. It was upstander and bystander, but she was also the in between fine line that gray line that people don't really look at with people uh, and um you have watchers people who watch out for these kind of behaviors are uh, also as guilty of these things and there's people who just stand by but are not benefiting from it but yet are not doing nothing about it those people too are as dangerous as the person that's doing it so she was just breaking it down it, it's kind of funny the reason why this particular subject captured me when I woke up this morning I saw a list of notifications and I like this is the one that I, I, I think I'll take interest in because yesterday I was on a bus as usual coming home my last bus coming home and um, I've, I, a man was trying to pass by but the lady who was sitting down on the bus had a shopping cart that was blocking the way she was totally wrong for block she could have moved it to the side but every time she tried to move the car well, the, the bus was moving, so the car was not going to stay stable. So she she put it in the middle where nobody else can pass in and nobody else can pass by. So this older gentleman was trying to pass. At first, first when she got on the bus, right, she almost fell over the car. She almost, because the bus was moving in the car. So I seen the gentleman and her exchange of words. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I guess he tried to help her. And they was just having that little talk. She was like, no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it, bomb. I guess she felt uncomfortable with him. Da, da, da. So she sat in the middle of the bus. I'm talking about literally in the middle of the bus with her car. Now, the same gentleman, again, wanted to pass by and speak to the bus driver. But she was, she, she, he was talking to her. He's like, yo, I have to pass by. He told her that. He said, I mean no harm, I just got I just want to pass by. Cause she felt uncomfortable the first time they had a, in a that little exchange. So I could tell. And I'm paying attention. So I'm like, I'm paying attention. And she was like, and he was like, I had to pass by. But she wasn't saying no words back to him anymore. I guess she was just she just didn't want to she just didn't want to start a conversation in her mind. She just didn't want to speak to him or have any form of interaction with the guy anymore. So she was just quiet about it. He was like, oh, you got me fucked up. I just want to... He's he started yelling at the bus driver. She, she's blocking the way. And the bus driver said, I can't... I, the, he, he thought the bus driver was ignoring her too. Was ignoring him. Then he was like, oh, y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got me fucked up. And the bus driver was saying back to him, like, yo, I can't hear you. Like, I'm all the way in the front of the bus. You in the middle of the bus. I cannot hear you. The bus is at least roughly probably 12 feet long. Roughly, hopefully, yeah, probably more than that, honestly. Maybe 14, maybe. So, if you're in the middle of the bus, you're six feet. Nah, I think it's more than that, actually. If you're six feet away, if niggas gotta stand six feet back, then we definitely ain't repeat. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, the bus is long, it's one of them long buses. So, he, he was yelling, but she couldn't hear him. Plus, with the face mask and everything else, niggas really can't hear each other, honestly. <laughs> So long story short, let me cut this shit up. They both he was he was he, basically he couldn't pass by, so he just had to stay there the whole bus, and he couldn't speak to the bus driver. And the girl was still in the middle of the uh, uh, bus, waiting for the bus to uh, come to her stop. I mean, ironically, her, me, him, and uh, uh, and the girl was with another girl at, on the bus. Right, I'm not sure if they was together, but they was talking. All four of us was getting off at the same same stop, which is the last stop. I'm playing my game. <clears throat> Trying not to pay too much attention to it. I'm paying attention with my ears, but I'm not paying attention with my eyes. 
You feel me? So I'm just listening it out. But my eyes is glued on the game. I'm like, but I'm acting like I'm not paying attention. But I'm really paying attention. I'm just listening in and try to see, like, yo, where this going to go? Because I see the guy getting mad. And he keeps saying, y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got me fucked. And I'm, I'm like, all right. <laughs> see how close these niggas be driving? He's like, yeah, y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got me. I'm like, so I got to pay attention to that. So I'm playing a game, but I'm still paying attention. But uh, just, you know what I mean? Just in case. I hate when the coffee does this, yo. Shit crazy. I'm mad about this. I'm tight. Anyway, let's get back to the story. So, long story short, the bus came to a full stop. And um, the first words that came out of the girl, the other girl, the main character with the shopping cart, he was telling the other lady, which, which, which way are we going? So I'm assuming they know each other. Why would you ask a total stranger which way are we going? And she was like, we going this way. She pointed to the front of the bus. The back of the bus is where the guy is at. And, she was, and the other girl was like, okay. <laughs> so the other lady, I guess they were sitting right across from each other in the middle of the bus. So I don't understand why she would ask somebody else that. But I assumed they knew each other. The girl that she asked that went to the front of the bus. And exit out the front of the bus. Feel me? I'm waiting for everything to sort out because I'm very close to them too. So I sat I sat back a little bit to see what was going to happen. So long story short, the girl with the shopping cart decided to take the back of the bus. I thought that was a mistake myself. I'm like, she <laughs> I was just hoping she'd take the front of the bus. I'm like, yeah, this guy is mad at you right now. Like, he's furious. So, he stood in her way, basically. He just stood there. He still he stood in the same spot the whole ride, basically. So, as she was trying to back out of the bus, right? She was trying to go to the back of the bus. He was not moving. And I guess she tried to go through him some form, in some form of fashion. And she just, she was like, <clears throat> like he was about to punch her in the face. He's like, oh, then she started. Then she. That's when she started panicking. Then I'm like, I'm, bro. I didn't even know what to say in that moment. Like I didn't want to be a bystander and let this nigga beat her up. And I didn't want to be an upstanding and let <laughs> and let that attention and all that frustration come to me. Cause at the end, it really had nothing to do with me. But at the same time, I couldn't just stand there and allow him to do that. So I had a dilemma. You see, this is the, this is what happens when you have when you are when you when you caught up in this situation. Whether you want to be an upstander, bystander, or somebody who just stand by and not benefit from anything else, which was me at that moment in time, or you just benefiting from it because you want you want to see some form of violence, but then you're not involved in it. It's just a different ratio that you got to cover. So this is what happened. You feel me? I was, I was like, whoa, like that. I just, I just like, whoa, like that. Just like, I was trying to make, like, try to. I stood back six feet far enough to make him feel my present without having to get in between them and stop a fight. You feel me? Sometimes that's all you have to do. Position yourself in a way where you let the person who's doing whatever they're doing, let them see that there's somebody else there who does not agree with what is going on. And you don't have to jump in and just start throwing punches, but it's the way you position yourself and the way you pronounce yourself into the conversation. And I was like, whoa, 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 calm down. And that's all I said. And that's all I had to say. You feel me? I was like, calm down. And the, the other lady started yelling to the bus driver. And she's like, he tried to hit me. He tried to hit me. <laughs> She's like, he tried to hit me, and I'm like, and I, all I said was calm down, but I didn't just leave the bus. I just stood, I just kind of like backed away a little bit and make sure that he follows through with where he was going, you feel me? So, like, sometimes you just got to know how to handle certain situation. Me jumping in there, be like, yeah, hey, what the fuck you doing? Pushing him back and everything will escalate into another situation. But staying calm and just making that small gesture, like, calm like, calm down, like, not, not, not in that football. I was like, whoa, yeah, yeah, calm down, calm down. Like, don't say too loud, don't say, just know when to inject yourself into the conversation or into the 
the whole narratives and everything else like that. And this was before Ted uh, talk. Feel me? Ted talk was this morning. This was last night. So I was more of an upstander, but I did it in my own way. And I'm saying that there's no blueprint to how to be an upstander. You can do it in your own way, but make sure that it's done. Do not allow it to just press. Just do not allow it to just keep going. You feel me? There's other areas in my life that should be an upstander. You feel me? But the situation is, it does not happen in front of me like the way it happened in front of me. It wasn't that easy for me to just see it and be like, whoa, if something happened right here, which I was just projecting throughout the whole ride, like something is bound to happen. The way these two keep going back and forth, something is bound to happen. But I was just waiting to see what was going to happen because these were two grown. The man was older than me, old enough to be my father. And the woman was like, I couldn't even tell but she probably was my age or probably a little younger. You feel me? But she was more like a tomboyish looking, like probably, you know, a little bit on the lesbian side. You know what I mean? With the pants and baggy jeans and hoodies and, you know, got a hat on, short haircut. So I'm stereotyping her right now, but it matches. She 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 fits the profile. You feel me? I'm sorry to say, like I hate to be that nigga, but yeah, she really do fit the profile. She fits the profile. But anyway, look, man, and that's all I did. I was like, whoa, calm down. But it was this close. When I said, I'm gonna let him put it like this. It was that close for him to hit her. And I think that would have been devastating because I saw his knuckle. His knuckle game look like he been through some things, and I saw her face. And I was matching the two. And I'm like, this is not going to be a good look at all. Like, those knuckles on those soft, buttery face. Like, she looked like she never had a pimple. You feel me? Like, he was going to devastate her with just one punch. Like, I could just see it. I just saw it in my mind. And although the devil in me wanted to just see a, uh, a fucking flick of it. You feel me? Just a pick of it. <laughs> It was my mind was like, hmm, imagine if that could have happened. If you see it, you have a, a full HD version of it. But then again, I couldn't allow myself. That's when you know the devil, you got God in you. And sometimes you be like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, don't disrespect my sight like that. You feel me? It might feel good for that second, but it's going to definitely haunt you for the rest of your life. So... I was like, whoa, whoa. Then he was like, he tried to hit me. And he's like, if I wanted to hit you, I would have been hit you. Then I just backed. I was just walking like, I was just like, whoa, whoa, calm down, calm down. Like that, just backing out of the bus a little bit here and there. Why she stay on the bus and why he was coming towards my way. You feel me? I was like, that's a good thing. I like, as long as he's coming towards my way. So I got off the bus. Then he got up the same. And he got up a second after. Because it was his last stop. Anyway. And the bus driver was asking the lady if she all right. And um, he was like, she was like, no, I'm not all right. But he never touched her. Not in any capacity. He never touched her. He, if anything, she tried to, she hit him with the car a little bit. And he cocked his fist back. In a motion of, I'm going to strike, I'm going to beat the, I'm going to punch the shit out you, bitch. <laughs> and those kind of words. But he never, he never touched her. You feel me? So... I was like, damn, that would have been devastating if he put those fists on her face. I'm like, that would have been wrong. And she was just, you know, of a lighter nature. We're not even going to say her grace. But it would have been bad. It would have just been bad. It would have been bad. So that was in a, in a, in a, in a, in a smooth way of being an upstander. It wasn't like I voiced my opinion and I stood out very firmly. There's no way of being an upstander. The smallest way, you could be, you could do, you could be an upstander in the smallest way and have a great impact. You feel me? If I, if it wasn't me on that bus, if I wasn't there at that time and I just got off and I allowed them to do, and I didn't present myself and I was like, yo, because everybody else got off. The lady that she, she told which way should we go was gone. I didn't even see her in the scene. She was just, I'm like, what the, f I, I got off the bus and I'm looking for her. Like, yo, your friend, like, probably was going to need you. She was gone. <laughs> that lady was sitting across from her was gone. Like, she was gone. And I'm like, well, she should have just listened to her when she said the front of the bus. We're going to get out the front. So you try to go through the back where the guy was at. And it's like, yo, 
when she once she started doing, I'm like, damn. I started like, I'm like fuck, man, because I'm like, damn, like, it's like when um, Denzel Washington was doing the Book of Eli, right? And those road standers, um, they was robbing, they was robbing, they was robbing the. Uh, it was two bystanders. It was a man and his girl, and um, a bunch of motorcyclists was robbing them. And Denzel wanted to help them, but he was like. Stay on your path. Stay on your path. This has nothing to do with you. Stay on your path. So sometimes I always go through that dilemma. And I'll be telling myself, <laughs> stay on your path. Stay on your path. This has nothing to do with like, If you that close, I'm like, nah, this has, this has something to do with me. I have to, I have to make sure that I inject myself in that conversation. You feel me? But I didn't tell you guys that I was out the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Yeah, right now I'm at the Grand Canyon. I'll show you niggas real quick. Hold on. Let's see what they got up there with the nose. Let's see. I don't know who's being thinking about here. So, basically, you see. Yeah, man. So that's what happened, but it wasn't like I was an upstanding. You know? Like, dude, like, stepped in there with an attitude, you know what I mean? Like, I was in the end up uh, to um, Dr. Dre. What happened to Dr. Dre? It was very devastating. I'm like, damn. Like, I didn't even imagine that Dr. Dre ever seen a football brain and an episode. I'm not pronouncing that for you. So hopefully everything goes all right. You know, shout out to the doctors taking care of them. You know what I mean? We need to get back to where doctors are making miracles, keeping people alive. These are the times that we need them the most. To keep them alive. Let me show you. So, that's what it is, man. As you can see, it's supposed to be nice today, but the weather just, it's not cold, but it's like a nice filter. But it's just, as you can see, well, you can see all the way that far back, the wind is coming so fast, it hits you, you feel me? Like the whole shit. You feel me? So, it's not like where I'm from in New York City where there's a lot of buildings, so the wind is bouncing up the building. By the time it gets to you, it doesn't have the same impact. Here, there's so much land stretching out as far back as you can see, even all the way back to that mountain in the background over there. Oh, we got a mountain right here. It's just full speed ahead with the wind. So, It gets windy out here. That's the only bad part about it. But, yeah, yeah. Now let's get back to the upstander and bystander. I only got like five more minutes to talk about this. Then after that, I'm done. So, it's like, you know, like I said, man, in that moment in time, I kind of did it in a soulful way of being a bystander and upstander because it was right in front of me. You feel me? I think it's very important that we have people that speak to people who abuse power. You feel me? There's a lot of people out there who abuse power and always feel like they can use the position they are in to influence people's decision and influence people's life. And we need to just stand up to it and be an upstander and don't be a bystander just in, just because you think I am not why I am not part of it and I'm not doing it. No, you are as guilty as those who are doing it. You feel me? You are an accomplice. Even in the law, they call you. They call people like that an accomplice to a murder or accomplice to a crime, and it doesn't make it any difference. Cause I didn't do nothing. I just well, you didn't. You didn't call nobody neither. So how are we supposed to know you're not part of it? You feel me? You could be that person that's watching now. You dig? So I think we need to be stop being upstanders. And I felt like that message was so true that I had to share it with you guys. You feel me? 
So that's what I'm, and that's gonna be the closure of my shit. Cause my battery, my apartment, I'm charging my phone and saying sockets. It doesn't want to charge and shit like that. It's crazy. But when I charge it on the bus, or I charge it somewhere else, it charges. But in the socket itself, it doesn't want to work. But I know it's all part of the hate. They just they try to make me feel uncomfortable. So they try to make me leave and everything else. But you can't make me leave. Like it's it is not your right to do so. Like these people don't even pay rent over there. So it's like I'm like, yo, who the hell are these dirty ass niggas? Like dirt bag like anybody that has time that much time invested and in, to occupy a small portion and try to occupy a small portion of somebody's room or life or everything else and try to influence it come on man you can't talk to me about you got millions and everything or you got money you nigga how are you making money just by being here you that it's an oxymoron it doesn't even make sense you losing money by paying too much when you paying attention to somebody somebody you losing what you have in your possession. Even millionaires gotta keep up with the game and still make more money. You feel me? The fuck is we talking about? Your body in motion stays in motion. You know what I mean? A body at rest stays at rest, and that's the same thing with money too. You feel me? If your body's at rest, it will stay at rest. A body that is constantly moving will stay in motion. It's like a will. When it's spinning, it keeps spinning. It's spinning. Like, fuck is y'all niggas talking about? Who you talking to? Like, niggas, they, make, they hating on you because they really broke, honestly. Trash. Niggas have no influence, so... They gotta... Just like New York, niggas gotta make a name for themselves by doing something to you so they can grab a little bit of name for themselves. So they took the game. I guess they gave them the game. I don't know why they did that. They gave them the game and have them doing the same thing that I used to experience back in New York and shit. But it's all good, man. Because I still got to work today. Still got my money in today. You feel me? Still doing what I need to do. And that's that. You feel me? That's that. And I'm, I'm trying to make strides. I got to make sure that. It counts, you feel me? I'm not going to speak on it. I want to do it first before I speak on it. Because sometimes actions speak louder than words. And I want my actions to speak. Because sometimes I be saying I'm going to do it. Then something happened. So I want to set a pattern of me doing it first before I pronounce it. We're going to try it a different way. But you know, I think my mind is flipped up complex. So I'm going to try it a different way. Because sometimes I be saying I'm going to do this. Then... It just doesn't happen. So I'm going to try it a different way where 